About two weeks ago, I made this video on Raw Draw Android, which is uh, my studio for developing apps, native activities for Android, 100% in C, no Java, no Kotlin, no Android Studio even, just need this, the JNI and the NDK. And it lets you write programs and compile and test them in about 1.8 seconds, which was a ton of fun. And it, uh, it actually had one of the best like to view ratios of any of my videos ever, which is, I guess, a pretty good cue that you guys seem to really like this. It was only like a minute 58 long, and so I decided to make a much longer video and, and just push as far as I could, as fast as I could, um, in about two weeks um, in my free time, my, my extra time. Um, and so what I have today is I have a few new pieces. So number one is um, I have this here, which is uh, a tensegrity lamp, and it's it's, you know, it's hard for me to get access to my, my lab, so I, I ended up actually getting a, getting PCBWay both to make the circuit board and to populate it. And so PCBWay actually, with their service, very quickly went and cut the PCB and put all the parts on for me. And they actually had a whole bunch of them. Um, so if, you, uh, if you've been one of my patrons, I guess maybe the first five, because that's how many I have extra here, no guarantees. A bunch of the LEDs on these seem to have died. I didn't give them very good soldering instructions on that. And I was also using RGB WW LEDs, which are extra sensitive. But if you want to just play around with it and you want to be able to, uh, to try this out uh, and take one of these, um, which, by the way, uh, the GitHub for this I'll have in the description. Um, take one of these and produce it into one of these, a little tensegrity structure. Tensegrity is just like means that uh, all of the support of the pieces are always in tension. So like as you can see, um, this structure right here is really uh, uh, just like all in tension. So the piece in the middle is actually what's supporting the top. Um, but under under tension, so it looks it looks like it shouldn't work, but it does. I don't know. I think these structures are pretty cool, so I decided to do some electronics with it. Um, and on here, you actually have a little uh, USB port and an STM32F042. Um, and this little STM32F042 is a crystalless uh, USB solution from ST. Great little part. They're like sixty cents a piece in volume, um, and it just lets you add USB to projects. Uh, which, by the way, I guess uh, at the end just I'm probably going to ask like which which things you want to see more videos on. Um, so just let me know in the comments. Uh, anyway, so this this right here is a little tensegrity structure, a bunch of LEDs. And if I go and I put it down, um, and uh, let's refocus on it here. Uh, and we plug it into uh, my Android device here. Then all of a sudden, my Android device provides but provides it power. Um, and you can see that, uh, that really, that's it. So it's just, just provides power. But that's not it. Because I have also been working on this project over the last few days um, called uh, Android USB Test, which lets me go and open USB devices. So um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to say, uh, build this right now. And so it's building and it's flashing and it's everything else. Um, and so just a little bit later, it runs it on my Android phone here. So now I'm running a C program on my Android device and it, it it's asking for permission to use this right here, which is so cool because now uh, I'm actually using the JNI to do all of the crazy SE Linux stuff to get access to, um, to the various like extra layers of things. But once you do, you can request from the OS access to devices and they'll give you a file handle with all of the privileges you need without rooting your device to be able to talk to USB devices. And supposedly this will work with even bulk endpoints and, and isochronous endpoints and everything. Um, but but I, I'm only testing it right now with an interrupt endpoint. Um, but yeah, so you get uh, uh, output support. And as you can see here, if you look at the uh, this little white piece over here, uh, you can see that as I touch the, uh, let's go dim this down a little bit. Um, as I as I touch this area over here, it's actually like bi-directional. So I can, I can kind of uh, touch different parts on this thing. And I have uh, software-defined touch, so it's, it's not actually using the touch hardware. It's just turning up I.O. on and 
Yeah. Anyway, so bi-directional USB in Android programs without any issues at all. Like you just request from the OS, access the device, and it just blindly gives it to you. And and that's just amazing. So like there's no way, no way Android would actually allow any of this junk on their store. Like that's just that was just totally infeasible. I, except that I also took RawDraw and Color Cord. So I took RawDraw Android and color cord and attach the two to each other. And color cord is a project that me and a ton of other people have been working on for years now, which maps sound to light. You can just search it on YouTube and there's a lot of, a lot of videos on it. Um, and if I go to the app store and I search for the word color cord, guess what? It shows up and I can install it. And I can also open it. And right now I have it so it accesses your files um, in order to find out if you have a config file for Android to tell it like what more to do. And it also needs access to the microphone. So like I can talk into it. Um, ooh, that was weird. Oh, okay. Uh, oh, there we go. Ah, it was because it was trying to load the new thing. Um, but I can go, ooh. And it's running uh, raw draw Android's color cord um, on my Android phone, and it's asking for permission to use this device. So now I have this right here. I have an Android phone hooked up by USB to my Tensegrity structure, and I can go, ooh, and now color cord has access to hardware like physical hardware through USB um, all of this done in C like, I don't know man this is just a ton of fun so if you guys are, are curious about any of the the specific tech surrounding any of these individual pieces or components like let me know and I can try to do more videos on them I'm probably going to try to do a video on how the uh, the make file works in order to to build the APKs. Um, but beyond that, I don't know. Um, yeah, so check out some of these projects. I'll have links to all of the GitHub uh, repos down below. And um, actually, I guess it's even weirder now that I think about it. I've been doing uh, these this video 100% in VR just because the mic on the index is so good. So I don't know, throwing a lot of new stuff at the wall, seeing what sticks. I hope you guys like this video. And um, yeah, like, subscribe, and tell me what... Thing you really want me to prioritize as far as like what project next. I wanted to make an addendum from last time um, and that's because after I made the last video but didn't release it yet, I actually got the version of Color Cord which is right now on the Android Play Store to run on my S5 Mini from 2014. So it means you could go like find old Android devices you just have kicking around and then do interesting C projects with them. Um, and the other thing I wanted to bring up was how I did the remote debugging. Um, and so that's actually relatively easy. Uh, so I have a, my phone plugged in right now uh, to, uh, to my laptop and I'm going to say ADB TCP IP 5555. And then what I can do is I can disconnect the laptop from the phone, so now the phone could be plugged into a device or something like that, and now I can say ADB connect and then my phone's IP address, and so now ADB can go deal with everything remotely. So I can say make uninstall clean run, um, and it's going to uninstall from the device, which, oh, that's interesting, it got an error, let's see if it works, um, and put it back on the device, and let's see if this works. It should and there we are now we have color cord running on my little phone right here uh, my little phone from uh, 2014 uh, and one of the neat things I wanted to bring up was that we can actually run color cord on two phones at the same time and see something neat so one is if we go boop 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 you can see that the old phone is a lot more latent so there's probably latency stuck somewhere in the stack which by the way it is actually running at 60 fps so this old phone still has a quite a bit of life in it as long as you're not trying to bog it down and the other one is you can see the color cord algorithm and how it just matches so be So these phones aren't communicating to each other in any way. They're just listening to my voice. 
ピー And so you can see that the color chord algorithm is surprisingly consistent with itself.、Um, yeah, hope you guys liked it. Record on two phones at the same time and see something neat. So one is we go boop.